Hello and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide and the final video from my trip to New York here on this channel. Of course, there's many other different videos from my trip to New York over on Adventure Shore, my second channel. Uh, and like I say, there'll be a link to it at the end uh, and also in the video description as well. Uh, but yes, welcome to something a little bit different today because I've traveled about 12 miles out of central Manhattan. Just come and have a bit of a close season walk around one of the most famous amusement areas uh, in the world. A lot of people People have heard of Coney Island. Uh, it's located on Long Island and it's an amusement and recreation area along with residential as well. There's a lot of people that live around here uh, and this is their escape to the seaside so to speak because I'm walking along the beach. It might look like it's absolutely lovely uh, but honestly it's really not. It's minus three today. Uh, yeah so it's very cold but uh, I'm walking down here on the beach and I've come to have a little look at Coney Island and the amusement areas around it. Uh, now yeah I've just walked from the subway station uh, about five minutes here onto the beach and it kind of reminds me if you've ever been to a British seaside resort or uh, you know around the European seaside resorts over winter you'll know what they feel like there's all the shutters closed down uh, there's work going on uh, but there's hardly anybody about and that's the case here I can imagine that Coney Island in the summer is packed full of people an amazing atmosphere and i'd love to come and see that at some point in the near future uh, but yes let's go for a close season look round at coney island now of course it's most famous for the cyclone wooden roller coaster uh, and we can get right up to it it's an amusement park built along the beachfront here we can get right up to that and have a look uh, in 2014 i think it was they opened thunderbolt uh, a roller coaster manufactured by zamperla uh, that is located just to the side of me here uh, and yeah, if I gradually spin the camera around, we'll get a bit of a look at where we're going to be walking. So all along the side here, I believe the New York Aquarium is also down there. You got a little glimpse just as well of the uh, Ferris wheel and also the cyclone. Uh, and in the background there, you can just make out uh, Thunderbolt, uh, which is a Zamperla roller coaster. Uh, but yeah, I, I can imagine in the summer this is amazing around here, but it's got a bit of an eerie atmosphere actually, like any seaside resort does over winter. Uh, but yeah, let's go and have a little look around. It looks like there might be a bit of work and stuff going on around the park. So obviously I'm going to be staying outside the park on the uh, boundaries to it. I'm not going to be going in anywhere that I shouldn't be. Uh, but yeah, let's go for a little walk around uh, Coney Island and go and see what it looks like over winter. And of course, it's weird for me because I've never been on these rides here before. And I'm going to be looking at Cyclone thinking, God, I wish I could go on it. But uh, I thought on my trip, I'm going to have to come out here and see it uh, and, and come and have a little look around here. And I'm glad that I have because it's so peaceful and it's so beautiful. And it's only 12 miles out of Manhattan. Beautiful. Right, let's go for a uh, little explore. This boardwalk area here is absolutely wonderful and we've got some information here about Coney Island because it wasn't just one amusement park here, it's numerous different amusement parks have been here over the years and lots of different tourist attractions. And there's lots of information about it here and the area where we're standing now uh, was known as Steeplechase Park from 1897 and that started Coney Island's reputation as the nation's playground. And you can see there are lots of information about it. In 1907, Steeplechase Park was gutted by fire and rebuilt to include this pier, which is just here. Rhymes. I do apologize about the noise. There's a bit of construction work going on. Uh, a bit more information about it all there. So the pier was collapsed. Hurricane Sandy damaged the pier in 2012 and it was rebuilt. Wow, a lot of history for this area. There's the Wonder Wheel on this fascinating photo. We can see lots of different rides that have come and gone over the years. The Virginia Reel just there. Wow, I'd love to have ridden that. It's amazing, isn't it, all this history. And of course, we've got this big tower at the back just here, which is actually, if I spin the camera around, still standing to this day. And there it is. Been painted up a little bit by the looks of it, especially down the bottom just here. But yeah, that tower uh, was a former ride. It was a former parachute ride that I believe, from doing a bit of research, it was built um, for the 1939 New York World's Fair. Uh, now this ride's actually not been operating for a long time now. Uh, it stopped operating in 1964, so a long time ago, but it's still standing because it's a staple to Coney Island. And this area, like I say, is stunning along here. All the beachfront, you can't even see the skyscrapers of New York because they're all sort of in that direction. Whereas over here, we've just got pretty much unobstructed views 
it's lovely really nice area for a winter walk and um, yeah like i say we'll carry on walking down this way but yeah the parachute jump isn't that great how it's still standing that was one of the things that i wanted to come down here and see and of course get some photographs of but yeah, as I mentioned just over at the sign, there's a combination of parks. I think they class it now as two different amusement parks here, along with some rides and things that don't really fit into any of the parks at all. So we'll head down this way and first they start off with having a look at uh, Thunderbolt, which is one of the newest rides to be built here. Now Thunderbolt was a wooden roller coaster uh, that opened here at Coney Island in 1925 and operated all the way through until 1982 uh, and then it did remain standing until it was demolished in year 2000 uh, and then 14 years later uh, 2014 the opening of the new Thunderbolt a steel roller coaster as we can see here manufactured by Zamperla and this looks like a really good ride there's a look at the drop just there. And like I say, with this being an amusement park, we can get really close to the rides here during off season. This is just a, a road that runs in between. You've got Thunderbolt to the left and then on the right hand side there, it looks like a Zamperla Volair flying coaster there. Oh dear, one of my nightmares. I'm not a big fan of those. It's, a, it's basically a hero from Flamingo Land. You know my thoughts on that. <laughs> if we uh, spin it around this way. Look at that loop. This ride looks fantastic and I've seen a POV, I've seen some off-ride shots of it and yeah it looks like it would be great, I'd love to get on this at some point. It's a bit gutty when you look at rides, I know that I, like, we went and booked the trip only just over a week ago now, uh, I booked it knowing that the parts were closed, it was a sightseeing trip this and um, to come and see stuff but I did say that I'd come and see this if I had time which I have had uh, and I'm glad that I've come to see it, it makes me excited to come here one day in the summer and see it alive and buzzing full of people there's a go-karts track just there and by the looks of it there's another road at the other side of that so i think what i'll do is we'll walk down this way get some more shots of thunderbolt here on the left take a right at the bottom and then sort of walk back up that way and next to the ugh, volair take a left and then make our way down towards the cyclone thunderbolt is a really impressive structure features four inversions as well really like the out and back feel of it i assume the original thunderbolt wooden coaster had that sort of out and back uh, feel down the side here i don't know that because i've not really had a look that much into it I only read a few bits online but uh yeah it's fascinating it's quite eerie around here especially when you're walking around there's only a couple of people a bit of maintenance work going on there's me looking during the ride da -da -da -da. <laughs> i love it yeah, carry on around this way. This looks like the main street area and I'm pretty sure Coney Island subway station was just down here to the right where I first stepped off the subway. That turnaround section there. Looks like a great ride. Oh my God, look at this here. The original hot dog for over a hundred years. Oh yes. I bet that's not open, but you never know. <laughs> Little look down that way. That's where we're gonna go shortly. You can just see the cyclone down there in the distance. It looks like that's an area where you're not allowed down there, but like I say, there's another road what runs through the middle there. So yeah, you can actually walk down the street. I've seen people walking the dogs down there and stuff. Fascinating. Wow. The true American amusement park right here. This is the building what's got those famous hot dogs. Looks like it's open. I might have to go in there. And this looks like the main street just here, what leads down through Coney Island. That's the subway station just over there. Very pretty. You can see it's got all lights on it there, so at night I bet it looks amazing. Of course we'll continue walking up here to the right to take a look at the Volair. That just looks like my paradise, doesn't it? <laughs> there you go, look at this, the hot dog eating contest. Countdown to July the 4th. All the days, hours, minutes and seconds left to go. The female record and the male record. My name could be up there on that screen if I come here on July the 4th. That is fantastic. Wow. This is like the main street here that runs down through Coney Island. You can see the Coney Island subway station there. 
very nicely designed. It's got all festoon lights on it as well. So I bet that looks stunning in the dark. All the different gift shops. It's like Blackpool, isn't it? It really got that Blackpool feel this has. But we're gonna continue walking down this way and have a look to the left where we can see more of Luna Park and the Valair, what we can see just down the bottom there on the left. We're getting a bit of glare from the sun here, but should be okay when we get back up the boardwalk area. Oh, and there it is, the classic cyclone. But I'll give you a bit of history and talk more about that when we get up here. I've always found amusement parks to be very eerie when you see them out of season. Because you just imagine everybody here in the summer having an amazing time, the music, the ice cream, the roller coasters running around, and now there's just nothing. I'm so glad that I've come to see it like this. I know some people might think it's a wasted trip, but I honestly don't think so at all. I love seeing this sort of stuff. And uh, now we've got a couple more Zamperla rides here. They love the Zamperla coasters. 2011 steeplechase opened, and that's a motorbike coaster. You can just see a corner of it there, but when we get around here, we should see a bit more. And then also opened in 2011 was this. I don't know if that's a good thing or not that this is here, but uh, there you go, we've got a Zamperla Valair flying coaster just here as well. Of course, Hero from Flamingo Land. The standard layout there. Obviously, we're sort of standing in the caravan park at uh, Flamingo Land from where I am here at the back of it. If you imagine it, that's sort of looking out towards Mumbo Jumbo would be over that direction. Not a big fan of those rides at all, as you guys know. <laughs> Check out the Flamingo Land vlog if you've never seen it. Looking back towards Thunderbolt from here. Very picturesque ride, that is. That's a, another entrance here to the Scream Zone. Yeah, you're definitely going to scream on board that thing. Now, as much as I absolutely hate that kind of ride, it certainly looks a lot more picturesque here than it does at Flamingo Land and the colour scheme of Soaring Eagle is a lot nicer. You've got all this artwork around, another entrance area there. A gift shop that's open. They can't be making much money today, can they? Ruby's Bar and Grill. But yeah, this is amazing around here. I love this to bits. I mean, I've always been a big fan of boardwalk style amusement parks and growing up with Blackpool Pleasure Beach uh, back, of course, in the UK for any Americans watching this. Uh, it's very similar to this Blackpool. You know, you walk along, uh, obviously you've got all the beach off to the side. Stunning boardwalk park, much like this. And we're getting our first close up glimpse now of Cyclone over there. That's a very, very iconic roller coaster that I'm gutted that I can't ride. But at least I came here knowing that it was closed. I, I imagine if I'd have come here expecting it all to be open. <laughs> well, we can get some more views over to Steeplechase now. You see another road here just running through the, the middle of it. So yeah, you can it just sort of stops here. You can just walk around it all. Here's a look at Steeplechase. The Zamperla motorbike roller coaster. Oh, more hot dogs. Nathan's famous hot dogs. Ah. All these hot dogs. That doesn't look like it'd be a very comfortable ride, that does it? <laughs> it's quite a compact layout, isn't it, for a motorbike coaster? Really compact. The Wonder Wheel entrance. Got this little shot and drop ride here. Is that new or it's got all the cellophane on it or they just wrapped it up for the winter? Probably so. I don't know though, it doesn't look in a bad state. The whole place doesn't look in a bad state in terms of, uh, you know, what you'd expect an amusing park to look like over winter. Obviously a lot of painting and maintenance goes on, but you've got a bungee jump there, you've got a booster, which has actually got the sides removed, the actual cars have been removed for winter. Fascinating, isn't it, seeing all this stuff? Because a lot of our parts back home are very closed in, but well, most of them are, so you don't get to see anything like this. So it's really quite fascinating. A unique look there at Wonder Wheel without any of its gondolas on. Obviously this is one of those Ferris wheels where there's gondolas on the inside wheel just there. And there's also ones on the outside that run along the track. You can just make out the track just there. If you want to see one of these in action, there's one at, uh, well it's now Pixar Pier, uh, Disney's California Adventure, also here in the States. 
So if you check out my video from that. But of course, this is a original. This is an old ride. Look at that. It's so iconic. I'm loving seeing all of this today. But yeah, it's 150 foot tall, that is, apparently. And it was built in 1920. God, I'd love to ride that right now. Well, maybe not right now, because there's no gondolas, but you know what I mean. And go around that track and get some amazing views. This is a really another good angle looking into the park here. We see another couple of roller coasters just there as well. One up the top on the left, and then another one down here on the right. And the tickler, a spinning coaster there in the background with the subway there running just behind it. I love the classic feel of this place. I can't wait to see it at some point in operation. It looks like there's quite a lot of flat rides and things here as well. They also do a Halloween event, Halloween Harvest. You can see here from the banner, some creepy kid there with, uh, of course, some of the most iconic rides. This looks to be like one of the main entrances here. There's lots of different gates leading into it, but look at some of the prices. All day pass there, $42 for under 48 inches, $69 for uh, over 48 inches, and you can get credits as well, paper ride. Yeah, there's your uh, opening time. So yeah, opening in March, closed in October. Standard sort of opening hours, but there you go, it's open until midnight looking at some points. 8 and 10 o'clock closes, yeah, some, you know, good opening times. Electro spin down there, Lunar Games. Fascinating to see, isn't it? And of course, we're heading round to what I'd like to call the main event very shortly. Here's a map of the boardwalk area just here, and we can see some more old photos there. I can imagine it still gets that busy there in the summer. That's from 1965, and the top one there from 1906. Yeah, and here's a, a map of the front. Huge area, there's volleyball courts all the way along. The New York Aquarium is marked on there. Obviously, I'm standing right here now, about to go down 10th Street to look at Cyclone. Obviously, all the Wonder Wheel and everything's there. Yeah, it says there's an ice skating ring there as well, but yeah, you can go all the way down here. And it is amazing. It's a really nice boardwalk. I wasn't expecting it to look anywhere near like this. I'm assuming that building down there is the aquarium. But that's gradually where I'm heading to after we first have a look at this. The Cyclone Wooden Roller Coaster. Wow, the Coney Island Cyclone. Now, I first read about this coaster in a book uh, when I was about five or six years old. And I was just looking at the pictures and everything and thinking, oh my God. And then of course, my love for theme parks really started to develop. And yeah, and then I saw it uh, in, on the websites, online, and, and now I'm seeing it in person. I can't quite believe it that I'm standing here looking at it. Unfortunately, I'm not riding it, but wow, it is amazing to see such an iconic coaster. And we can get really close to it and get some very nice shots of it as well. Looking back there over everything else what we've just seen, it's not a massive amusement park but there's a lot packed into a tight space for us to see. But yes, let's have a look at Cyclone and of course talk a little bit about it all. The Coney Island Cyclone opened in 1927 and it's actually a hybrid coaster uh, because it's got a steel support structure with a wooden track. Uh, now the whole area around here used to be a theme park known as Astroland and the ride did actually get demolished. Uh, I think it was in the 70s because they were going to expand the aquarium and this site uh, over onto where the Cyclone currently sits. But luckily a, a trust was set up and the ride managed to uh, stay and of course it still operates to this day. Uh, of course not during the winter uh, but there's a lot of work going on at the moment here as we can see if we look just through the gap here uh, into these waste disposal areas quite a sad thing to see isn't it if we look through there there's parts of the track obviously it's blurring out there on the fence if I zoom in a bit from here you can see parts of the track there that are just being thrown away which is a shame but of course that does mean that new track is going in and it's keeping this ride alive. So it's a shame to see those images. Kind of reminds me of what we saw at Pleasure Beach with the wild mouse removal, which was very sad. But at least we know that this ride, it's only a refurbishment. Uh, and yeah, a lot of work is taking place, as we can see from a little bit further around here. It's just amazing to see it. More stuff there on the uh, forklift. 
of the side. Wow, look at that. So you can see a whole section there is, is missing and if we move a bit further back, I don't know really why I'm looking behind me when I walk out into this road because I don't think there's gonna be anybody coming down in, but you never know. <laughs> Look at these scenes just here of where all that track has been taken out. Look at that. Right, let's uh, walk around the front of it and have a look round that way. I say the front, is in from the main road, looking down this way, and head round the other side. God, it's so amazing to see it, and I look forward to riding it, hopefully in the near future. So there's a look down towards where we was earlier on, and of course another entrance there round the front. And a very iconic view here of the Coney Island Cyclone. I know I've said it about 20 times in the last few minutes, but I still can't believe that I'm here seeing it. Cyclone ticket booth just here. That iconic sign on the side just there. Celebrating 90 years. I love boardwalk parks though, I really do. And this is from the American Coaster Enthusiasts, presented in June 2002. Of course, also known as ACE. Recognise the Cyclone as an ace roller coaster landmark. Wow. T shirts available there. And this is a look into the, the queue line area, I guess. All around there and into the station. Trains are all packed away somewhere, of course, for winter. I'll be back here in the summer at some point to come and see this, definitely. I've got to come and see this during. It's, I want to see it busy and pumping with people. I really do. Another iconic angle of it just there. Doesn't feel real. We've got a really nice look into the station now. It's very eerie and emotional seeing it like this, but it's nice to know that it's only closed for the winter. It's having work done to retrack it. So I don't think we'll ever see this ride come away from us now. I really don't. Of course, more history about the ride there. And yeah, we'll head around this way. So I'm just walking along the car park now of the New York Aquarium where we can see the other side of the Coney Island Cyclone with the rest of Luna Park and all the amusement rides there just behind it. Wow, amazing to see. Another really nice angle of the ride here from this car park. Wow, it's incredible, isn't it? I'll just do a few little zoom ins for you so you can see it. Of course, that iconic first drop with the sign at the top there. I'd love to see it all illuminated at night. Of course, I'd imagine over winter it's just dark and nothing's turned on, of course, as you'd expect over winter. But yeah, it's an amazing ride to see in person and hopefully I'll get to ride it soon. I really hope so. I'm so glad that I came to see it this trip. It's a special ride to me. I might not have been on it yet, but it's a special ride to me. And one day when I'm in my seat, going up that lift hill, it's gonna feel amazing. And I can't wait for that day to come. There's a look at the entrance area to the New York Aquarium. Kind of reminds me of the Skyline Pavilion at Butlins a little bit. Prices as of January, 2019, for an adult, 24.95. For a child, 19.95. And this is quite a funny little spot just here. Shark, a 4D experience, and you've got the BBC logo up there at the top. That's quite funny, isn't it? <laughs> That's crazy. Another little entrance area here, and this leads us back onto the the boardwalk. Well, we're going to wrap up this video, a close season look around Coney Island here on Long Island in New York. And what an amazing view. You can carry on walking along here for a long way by the looks of it. 
We'll just stroll along the beach and forget about the city that's only about 12 miles away. Like I say, you can sit here, relax and just enjoy it. So after just coming back round the other side, I've noticed here there's some workmen on the section of track that I previously filmed doing some of the retracking work just there. And I believe that GCI are a part of that as well. Great Coasters International. A little bit of uh, research that I've just been doing as well. Very interesting to see, isn't it? I imagine it's a big job to take on and of course, has to be a lot of trust in those guys to make sure that they do it right. Thank you very much for watching the final vlog on this channel from my January 2019 trip here to New York. And what a place to wrap it up with the backdrop of the iconic Coney Island Cyclone. Uh, now, of course, head over to my second channel, Adventure Sean, where there's various different videos that have already gone online. And there's also more to come from my trip to New York. I've done the three different observatories and got some amazing views from Rockefeller Center, uh, the Empire State Building, and also One World Trade Center. Along with that, I go to the Statue of Liberty, Brooklyn Bridge, and so much more. It's well worth heading over there to check it out uh, because that's where all my main videos from them touristy sites in New York are. And I've had an absolutely amazing time. So thank you very much to everyone that's gone over to that channel and seen those videos. And of course, if you've watched the three on this channel as well, uh, this video here, I also did one from Madame Tussauds, New York, and right next to it, Ripley's Believe It or Not as well. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you over on Adventure to Sean and of course in the next video here on Theme Park Worldwide. From Coney Island that means it's time to cue those credits. See you soon!